Let's make this delicious dish from the Malaysian state of Kelantan called Kuzi Ayam, but with chickpea tofu. To begin, we need to prepare a marinade for our protein. First, get a mortar and pestle and pound half an inch of ginger into a rough paste. Then add three cloves of garlic and one teaspoon of salt and pound those as well. Spoon the paste into a large bowl. Next, we'll need a few strands of saffron for color and aroma. Mix it into the paste along with one tablespoon of vegetable oil until well combined. You can use any plant-based protein that you like, but I like chickpea tofu for this dish because the firm texture absorbs the sauce for maximum flavor but still holds its shape very well. Instead of chickpea tofu, you could also use soy tofu or tempeh. To find out how to make chickpea tofu, I have a recipe for it right here. Add 650 grams of cubed chickpea tofu into the bowl and mix the coat in the marinade. Once it's well combined, set aside to marinade for 20 minutes or longer. In the meantime, let's make a kuzi spice mix or rumpah. It's super easy to make, but if you're pressed for time, you could use a Malaysian biryani spice mix as a substitute. So for this mix, we need cloves, cumin, turmeric powder, cardamom, star anise, coriander seeds, cinnamon, white pepper, fennel, and mace. Remove the outer shell of the cardamom and add the seeds into a spice grinder. All the other spices can go in as is, except for the cinnamon stick, which we'll need to break in half. Grind the spices into a fine powder and set it aside for later. As always, the exact amount of the ingredients will be in the description box below. Our next step is to make an aromatic paste. For that, we need to roughly chop 5 red onions and place them into a blender. Then, we need 4 cloves of garlic, 1 inch of ginger, and half an inch of sliced galangal. Close the lid and blend to a rough paste. Set this aside for later. To start off the cooking process, pour about 4 tablespoons of vegetable oil into a deep pan or pot. Turn the heat to low. While waiting for it to heat up, get 5 shallots and slice into thin rings. Toss them into the oil and stir to release any rings that are stuck together. We'll fry the shallots until they're brown and super crispy. Keep the heat on low and stir occasionally. If the oil gets too hot, the shallots will burn, so keep an eye on the temperature. The process is easier if you use a lot more oil and basically deep fry the shallots. I prefer to shallow fry to lessen the oil content in the final dish. Once the shallots are nice and brown, get them out of the oil and onto a plate lined with a paper towel. Into the same oil, let's fry one third of a cup of slivered almonds or flaked almonds. This will only take a few minutes to brown, so make sure not to leave the pot unattended. Once the almonds have the slightest hint of a toasty aroma, immediately spoon them onto a plate to prevent them from burning. Next, we're going to fry half a cup of raisins or sultanas until they turn slightly plump and smell sweet. This will also happen very quickly as the oil is already hot. Retrieve the raisins onto a plate and set them aside. I know there's a lot going on right now, but everything will come together and the layer of different flavors will really shine in the final dish. The last thing we need to fry is the marinated chickpea tofu. If you find that there's not enough oil in the pot, feel free to top it up with more. We want to fry the chickpea tofu on all sides until they're nice, crispy, and brown. They take about five minutes to cook on each side. You can also do this in the oven or in an air fryer to save time. Once they're cooked, place them on a plate and keep them for later. That's all our prep done. We're finally at the home stretch. Yay! Now we can combine everything together to make the koozie. Add 2 tablespoons or more of vegan butter or margarine to the pot. Use the same one for less cleanup. Once the butter has melted, go in with the aromatic paste we blended earlier. Fry on medium heat until the aromatics smell fragrant, change colour and start to dry out. Pour half a cup of water and sprinkle the spice mix we made. Give it a stir to combine with the water and paste. We're going to cook this for about 8-10 to 10 minutes until the paste starts to dry out. Or if you've used more oil, until the fat starts to separate or pecah minyak. Then we can pour an additional 1 cup of water to loosen everything up again. Top it up with 1.5 cups of oat milk. Stir to combine it well. Add 1 cube of vegetable stock and allow it to come to a simmer. While waiting, open a 160 gram tin of tomato puree or tomato paste and pour it into the pot. Season to taste with salt and a bit of sugar to balance. Next, we can add the fried almonds and the fried raisins. These two ingredients will give the final dish a really nice, crunchy, soft and juicy texture. Then we can add the fried chickpea tofu. Mix it through to coat in a thick sauce. Last but not least, the fried shallots. Instead of sprinkling it on the top, we're going to add it to a mortar and pestle and pound it to make a rough paste like this. We're then going to add it into the pot and stir it in. This will give the koozie another layer of caramelized, almost nutty flavor. This dish really does have everything. We have the crunch from the almonds, the sweetness and bite of the raisins, and the deep, nutty flavor of the fried shallots, all in a creamy, ultra-savory sauce. The chickpea tofu perfectly complements this dish's different layers with this mild flavor and ability to absorb the amazing sauce. Before we serve up this incredible dish, slice some calamansi lime or lima kasturi and squeeze it into the sauce. Feel free to use as many limes as you like. I used three limes for this recipe. The acidity balances out the richness and the deep savory flavors of this kuzi. Serve up the kuzi with white rice and enjoy immediately or for the next few days where the flavors will develop even further. 
Watch this video next to find out how to make chickpea tofu or this one for another exciting recipe and I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.